Due to the fact that people on the progressive left are so uncomfortable about race, we see oftentimes some of the stupidest things come out of these progressives' mouths. And one of those stupid things is giving credit to black Americans for everything, even though their contribution to those things is minuscule, if not non-existent. And a perfect example of this was a clip that was sent to me by my girlfriend that we might actually talk about later, about how Korean chicken actually something that black Americans are responsible for. Rubbing chicken wings. And it looks like they're gonna fry those stuffed wings. Oh, Korean fried chicken is by far the best fried chicken on the face of the earth. And you know why? Because it was taught to Korean cooks by African American GIs after the World War. If I had a mic, I'd drop it right now. Great pack. We was Koreans, apparently, is the message from that video. Now, I was going to do a deep dive into that video, and I still might in the future, and I was going to talk to you about Korean chicken because it is, in fact, delicious. But I just want to point out that this guy said that after the World War, the black American GIs taught the Koreans how to fry chicken. Because it was taught to Korean cooks by African American GIs after the World War. <laughs> If I had a mic, I'd drop it right now. Great pack. Which they would not have been able to do at all without them. Now, needless to say, that this guy, despite his smug, stupid face, is likely trying to say the Korean War and the reason for Koreans being able to make chicken is actually not related to that, but we'll get into that if I do that video in the future. And the thing is, this is rooted in the fact that people on the progressive left don't feel like black people have achieved enough. This is rooted in the fact that people on the progressive left feel like they need to pad their resume because they feel white guilt for them, so they have to do something in order to compensate. And I remember BuzzFeed years ago did a video about living without black inventions in order to accentuate this point. And of course, they highlighted a bunch of different quote-unquote black inventions that weren't actually invented by black people that they just wanted to show you that they couldn't possibly live without. But one of the inventions that they did gloss over was the refrigerated truck. Which, unlike the other products within that segment on BuzzFeed, was actually invented by a black person. And by the way... That is going to be the subject of today's video because oftentimes what you see from these progressives is that they try to pump up black accomplishments while overlooking legitimate accomplishments by black Americans that actually saved countless lives. So we're not going to do that. We're going to go through how my brain went through this whole process from that Korean chicken video and talk about the amazing American inventor known as Frederick McKinley Jones. Now, before we get into that, we have a sponsor of today's video we're gonna throw it over to the sponsor and catch you guys on the other side inflation is at 8.6 percent and climbing you're gonna need some help to get yourself back to financial safety Call them, and the experts at Noble Gold will tell you all about a precious metals IRA so you won't worry about a thing. And the thing is, if you call them quick and you set up a qualifying Noble Gold IRA, you will be gifted this beautiful one-tenth of an ounce gold coin from Noble Gold. It's like a little gold dime. It's got some weight to it. You absolutely will love it. Call them at 877-646-5347 or visit my affiliate link, pin comment, top of the description, noblegoldinvestments.com. Frederick McKinley Jones was born in Cincinnati, Ohio in the year 1893, and I think 1890s is somewhere around the time that the Cincinnati Reds baseball team actually came into fruition, making them one of the first, if not the first, team in Major League Baseball history, but I have no confirmation of that. We don't need to get into baseball. What we do need to get into is the fact that when he was 14 years old, he was already working as a very skilled and notable mechanic, and this was despite the fact that he had no real formal education, he just had a natural knack, and he studied stuff that he was interested in, which helped him become a better mechanic. Basically, a self-taught individual. Now imagine how the kids today actually function after four years of college, crying over words they didn't like or somebody speaking out of turn, demanding that they get time off due to Supreme Court decisions, and think about this young 14-year-old out earning money, killing it, with a natural knack for what he's working in. However, Frederick did not stop there. When he was a boy, Fred liked to tinker with his father's pocket watch. Eventually orphaned, Fred turned his tinkering toward early automobiles. Working odd jobs throughout the Midwest, 
Fred ended up on a large farm in northwestern Minnesota. Frederick actually left Cincinnati, Ohio, moved to Minnesota so that he could work on a farm repairing the equipment. And then World War I called, and Frederick went overseas to go fight for our nation in World War I. Radio had become a huge part of American life by the 1920s. Fred and a partner created microphones and transmitters. Now, after Jones returned from World War I, he moved back to Minnesota, and then he began working on and understanding some of the intricacies in the electronic devices that were starting to percolate in the nation at this time. And in fact, self-taught, he was able to build up a transmitter that was used by the town's radio station in order to become functioning. Again, a guy who never had any formal education, didn't go to college, didn't take woke studies, didn't take the history of lesbian dance theory, and yet he was a productive person in the United States of America, even at this young age. However, it did not stop there for him. It actually went much, much further. With the advent of talkies, sound was also becoming part of the movies. But the owner of Halleck's Little Gym Theater couldn't afford a new sound system, so he went to Fred for a favor. Halleck's handyman devised a film sound system that was so innovative, it caught the eye of a Minneapolis entrepreneur named Joe Numero. You see, while Jones was building the transmitter so his town could have a radio station, another invention that he made, his little side hustle, which we'll get into later, caught the attention of a man called Joseph A. Numero. And this invention, of course, would be something that revolutionized cinema for years to come. In the 1930s, Jones, the guy that we're talking about because he invented the refrigerated truck, actually invented a way where you could have sound combined with moving images so that you could have talking pictures in this theater in in Minnesota and this wasn't just a cheaper alternative than what existed and by the way it was just invented three years prior to this this was actually a cheaper and better alternative for this theater and he ultimately ended up getting hired on by Numero to work on the firm's sound equipment as he continually progressed audio technology throughout the 1930s into the Great Depression however it doesn't even stop there in 1938 when his boss asked him to figure out a way to keep food from spoiling during overland transportation, Fred Jones went to work. What he came up with was the world's first system for refrigerated transportation. The technology was applied to trucks and trains in the company Jones and Numero would call Thermo King. In 1938, Jones invented the portable refrigerator, this small contained thing where people could actually store goods and eventually would lead to the refrigerated truck, which would allow us to ship goods and produce across the country. And by 1940, he actually sold off his cinema equipment company in order to go into the refrigerated truck business. Fred Jones made it possible to ship and receive perishables year round the supermarket was born. During World War II, Fred adapted the technology for the army to help bring blood plasma and food to soldiers in the field. Now, since we're already getting into the 1940s, you guys know for a fact that there's going to be a World War II element to what we're talking about. There is no way that you could be talking about any kind of industry in that time frame in the United States of America without tying it to the war effort. And I want you to picture this. The United States of America actually had better fed soldiers than the people we are opposing during World War II. And one of the reasons why is because because we had portable refrigeration, therefore we could transport goods for further that were perishable unlike the people that we are fighting against. On top of that, we could refrigerate blood and other medical supplies, meaning that U.S. soldiers that were wounded had better survival rates because refrigeration is actually a crucial medical technology. And that's not just true for World War II, but it's true for long after. So Jones was a huge contributor to the United States during World War II. I'm not saying we would have lost the war without him. I'm just saying that this guy deserves some damn credit for what he did for our soldiers during World War II. Now, after the war in 1949, Frederick McKinley Jones actually submitted this patent drawing for a refrigerated truck. This was the design, and this would ultimately lead to the American people enjoying fresh produce driven over long distances from almost anywhere in the country. And of course, just like in World War II, this was not limited to the perishable foods, but also expanded the access of medical treatment across the nation. If you can't cool stuff in a truck, whether it be life-saving medical supplies 
or fresh produce, you're not going to have it. And by the way, the people who were invested in salt at the time, because the way we used to store everything in this country was by salting it, because that's the way that human beings would store everything for the longest period of time before refrigeration, were big mad, and you could say they were salty at Frederick McKinley Jones. Now, of course, Jones's company became a multi-million dollar company. Post-World War II, he continually consulted with the U.S. government and the Department of Defense because refrigeration and transporting foods and all that to soldiers on the battlefield is a good thing to have on your resume when you're seeking out those juicy government contracts. And he was inducted, the first black man to ever be inducted, into the American Refrigeration Engineers Association. Whatever, whatever. There's an association for everything. But yeah, he was inducted into that in 1944. And he was put into the Minnesota Hall of Fame because this guy's a Minnesota guy, even though he was originally from Ohio, because that's where he started up all these companies and whatnot. In 1921, a speedy contraption skidded across the snow-covered fields of Minnesota's Red River Valley. An airplane propeller, car engine, and other parts were cobbled together into one of the first snowmobiles ever built. A local doctor complained to Fred about having to constantly haul aching patients from their rooms to the hospital x-ray station. Fred devised a portable x-ray machine. Now, of course, Frederick McKinley Jones had a bunch of other patents, 61 total or thereabouts at the time of his death. And those patents, aside from the refrigeration and, you know, the revolutionizing film and cinema, were of nothing of high note. Totally stuff that we don't use today, like enhanced audio equipment, portable x-rays, and a more fuel-efficient engine, which, of course, we don't need because gas is so cheap under Joe Biden, we don't need to use less fuel in order to get ourselves further distances. No way at all whatsoever. The overall message from Frederick McKinley Jones, in my opinion, is that he has a great American story. And unfortunately, that story ended in 1961 when he lost a battle to cancer. However, I do want to point out that this story actually happened every single part of it before the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So all this was done during a time when discrimination against black Americans was the norm. It was instituted in law. Now, of course, he was in Minnesota. Obviously, that's much different from being in the deep, more segregated South. But as we've learned from George Floyd, the evil racists are absolutely everywhere. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not spoiling this video. But again, it was not easy in the United States of America. It was not easy in the United States military, which was resegregated and had a bunch of racial issues at the time. But this guy succeeded. He repeatedly succeeded, and he did so without a fancy education. He was self-taught. He had a natural talent. He nurtured that talent. And in the market economy that was the United States of America, despite the fact that there was more racism around, he was able to become successful, and he is considered as somebody in the Minnesota Inventors Hall of Fame, and deservedly so. He revolutionized a bunch of industries in the United States of America, helped us win the war, save our soldiers during World War II, and you gotta give credit where credit is due. Now, as far as what Frederick McKinley Jones means to you if you're a black American out there today watching this video... Probably nothing. His achievements are his own. He did it on his own, and his greatness is his own. That being said, if you're going to look to the contributions of black Americans throughout the United States and throughout the world, I would way rather focus on somebody like Frederick McKinley Jones than something related to fried chicken, which I'm old enough to remember when associating black people exclusively with fried chicken was in and of itself something incredibly racist, especially when there's dubious facts around the story that this guy was telling in the beginning of the video. Rubbing chicken wings? And it looks like they're gonna fry those stuffed wings. Oh! Korean fried chicken is by far the best fried chicken on the face of the earth. And you know why? Because it was taught to Korean cooks by African-American GIs after the World War. If I had a mic, I'd drop it right now. Great fact. There are great Americans that happen to be black that contributed amazingly to this country. You don't need to inflate. You don't need to stretch. You don't need to exaggerate. And it's actually shameful that when people do that, they overlook people like Frederick McKinley Jones. This country is full of people throughout our history. Many of those people happen to be black people who outwitted, out-innovated, and succeeded despite everything actually being against them. We should tell their stories instead of trying to say that 
black people as a whole own fried chicken or whatever this white progressive smug loser was trying to do in that segment. But hey, those are just my thoughts. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, you show them by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can follow me on all my social medias. You could support me on the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about Frederick McKinley Jones. Till next time.